Alrighty guys, welcome back to your final, oh crap, I gotta write this freaking thing down, 32nd, <laughs> you see I'm not messing up anymore, 32nd Ajax tutorial, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about how to handle an XML response from the server. Now if you guys are like, alright, you know what, instead of making this entirely different function, why didn't you just handle the response right here instead of calling a new function? Well, the reason that I like to separate handle state change and handle response is because I, first of all, it's very bulky if we try to handle it right here, and our code gets very messy. And also, I like to have one function that just checks and makes sure that you're hooked up to the server correctly. And then in this handle response, actually, let me copy that, we don't have to do any error checking. It's all pure functionality, pure code. So this, like I said, once you dig through all the layers of fat, that's when you get to all the good stuff. So now we're finally here. I'm so freaking excited. I gotta call my mom, hold on. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so handle the response from the server. Now, of course, I spelled function wrong. This function name is handle response. Now what this is basically going to do is loop through or go through the XML file and grab all of the important data that we need like the names and the social security ugh. <clears throat> sorry I got phlegm in my throat social security numbers and do something with them we're just going to print them out on the screen because you know it's the most simple thing so the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to store this entire response as an XML object. So in order to do that, just go ahead and make a variable or object, whatever you want to call it, and say XML response. Now what this is basically going to be is the entire file itself. So set this equal to XML. Let me let me see if I can steal my object from somewhere. XML HTTP response. XML. So now we got the entire response, which is basically this entire file stored in this variable XML response. Simple enough. So now what we want to do is we want to start extracting the information, but we can't just, you know, reach our hands in and grab, um, let's say, the name of Mike Litteris. We can't just, we need to do it in very programmatically, I don't even know if that's a word, but that's my word. I'm just freaking making up, making it up very programmatically way. So in order to do this, we go through the hierarchy of the XML file. We got the response, now we need to get the root element, and then we can dig down and get all the sexy information. So the first thing we need to do is extract the root element. So in order to do that, just go ahead and take your XML response, and there's a function called document element let me make sure I spell that and I, it's actually a property not a function but what this property is is it basically gets the root element of a file so remember this file which was the XML file has a root element called response so now this variable root is now equal to basically this element response so now we can say okay and by the way all XML files need a root element and it makes it so easy to work with so once we have that root element which is response then we can extract all the sweet information so root is basically the response tag just think that so now what we want to do is we're not really worried about that response tag we're only worried about the people's names and social security numbers so we have two people right now, but generally if you had a company, let's say a big corporation, you would have thousands or you know hundreds of people. So I'm gonna show you guys, instead of doing it one by one, this is how you get an array of all, uh, we'll just go ahead and do the names first. So go ahead and name your array, I'm just gonna name it names, which are people's names, and set it equal to the root dot get elements by tag name. Now what this is going to do is you're going to pass it a parameter. In other words, you're going to pass it um, the name of a tag. So basically, you're going to pass it the word name or SSN. Someone is mowing their freaking lawn. As soon as I start making these tutorials, everyone decides it's a good, it's a good idea or a good time to like chop down a tree, mow the lawn. My dogs feel like barking, farting. 
Anyways, I'm in the middle of a freaking tutorial. And, okay, let's go ahead and pass in name. And what this is going to do now is it's going to say, okay, I'm going to look at the root, which is basically looking at this XML file, and I'm going to get all of the information by tag name. And I'm going to store it in an array called names. So now what this did is it said, okay, brrr, okay, the first one, Bucky Roberts. That's the first element in our array. Brrr, next one, Mike Litteris. That's the second element in our array. Brrr, nothing left. So our array is two elements long. The first element at index zero is Bucky, and at index one is Mike Litteris. So that's how you kind of sort through an array. And as you can see, it takes one line, and it doesn't matter if you have 100 employees or 10,000 employees or only two, like we have in this example. This is how you do it quickly and efficiently. So of course, to do the social security number, it's very similar. Names. We'll just call this one social security numbers, SSNs. Now, of course, the only thing we need to change is the get element by tag name because the tag of the social security number isn't name, it's SSN. So if you pass SSN in here, what it's going to do is it's going to create another array and it's first going to store this and then store this. So now we have two arrays that we just created. The, they're each two elements long. The first one stores the user's names or the employee's names and the second one stores their social security numbers. Pretty freaking sweet. So now the only thing we have left to do is basically print them out on the screen, run the program and make sure everything is working successfully. So there's a very specific way that we need to actually um, loop through each ray and we can actually print them out simultaneously so we don't have to make two loops we can all put it in one loop so I'm actually going to be showing you guys how to do that in the next video but for now thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys then